हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद द शॉर्ट चैनल मॉडल सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी आर सीन अबाउट द नॉन आइडियल करंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स एंड हाउ इट वाज डिफरेंट देन दैट ऑफ द आइडियल करंट सो द सेम थिंग यू नो फॉलोइंग द सेम थिंग वी विल ट्राई टू डिराइव द करंट एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द नॉन आइडियल बिहेवियर विच इज विच इज सीन मोस्टली इन द शॉर्ट चैनल ट्रांसिस्टर so for a long channel transistor so whenever it is above 1 micron the channel length uh, we will use uh, the long channel current model whenever it is less than 1 micron effectively we will start using the short channel current but in most of our uh, uh, in most of our uh, uh, design uh, as well as you know the performance uh, pa param parameters uh, estimation we will use both the long channel and in the short channel uh, short channel will always give me the uh, the uh, Uh, the close to the real values, uh, close to the the measured values, but for the long channel uh, current model, if we are using, it will not give me a close to the real values or the measured values, but uh, it will uh, it it becomes very easy to estimate what what could be the current. So it becomes very easy in uh, processing the performance or the power or the delay parameters, right? So. Uh, for the rest of this uh, particular course, uh, we will still be using the long channel current model as well as the short channel current model. So this particular lecture, uh, in specifically, talks about uh, the deriving the short channel current. Right. So, uh, so we know this is the. Uh, the long channel current equation which is nothing but mu c ox uh, w by l into vgs minus vt minus vds by 2 into vds so again this is for the linear current for the saturation current it is nothing but uh, mu c oxide w by l into vgs minus vt the whole square uh, divided by 2 right so if i want to uh, you know i want to uh, arrive at a very generalized equation so the ids of long channel that's what i have written the subscript of uh, long channel here and uh, using this particular equation uh, i'll i'm just going to show that how to uh, remember the short channel uh, the linear equations right again it's not a derivation as such but it is just a you know just a comparison between the long channel current and what the short channel current uh, linear current we are expecting so the long channel uh, current equations um, uh, so if i take this vds you know this l uh, and uh, this vds into account i should be able to get this eds value right so vds by l is nothing but the electric field uh, drain to source and then if i take this uh, mobility and then eds together we should be able to arrive at uh, the velocity so velocity is nothing but mu into eds so that's what uh, is uh, so the the expression of ids is now uh, is given as a function of velocity right now if i use this velocity you know if you remember the non ideal characteristics or the short channel uh, you know the velocity expression so the, we had the velocity as velocity saturation uh, when the electric field was greater than ec or we had uh, you know the the mu effective uh, uh, mu effective uh, e divided by 1 plus e by ec so that is what we had for e less than uh, ec so we had two different uh, uh expressions for the velocity so if i consider e smaller than uh, ec here and uh, that will be our ids current and that will be our linear current so if i put that uh well the velocity expression for e smaller than uh, the electrical electric field we are going to get uh, this particular expression although you know uh, most of the electric field i have converted into the voltage by considering the voltage divided by length as the electric field right so in this case we will get uh, instead of e we will get vds uh, i mean we can always uh, you know e is nothing but uh, we can always replace e with that of the vds uh, divided by l right and then uh, vc uh, of n is a critical uh, electric uh, critical electric field again vc of n uh, we can always rewrite it as nothing but the critical electric field multiplied by l right so in that sense i am taking uh, you know all uh, getting all the electric field in terms of the voltage so that uh, you know it becomes easier or it becomes uh, comparable to the long channel current equations uh, which we have derived earlier right now the the previous slide uh, we we got together the uh, the the short channel current equation for the linear model uh, or the for the linear region not for the saturation region uh 
uh, but it is it is not a complete uh, foolproof method it is just you know uh, taking the long channel current equations and then uh, trying to substitute the parameters uh, which is uh, in effect coming from the short channel effects right so the mobility and then the uh, the velocity expression we are trying to incorporate that uh, into a general uh, current equation and then that is how we are arriving the short channel current equation so to effectively find out how do we derive the uh, current equations for the short channel so the Chardini's paper uh, which is also available in the reference section uh, with this will give us uh, the short channel current equations so the generalized equation is actually given in terms of the velocity so w c oxide into v g minus v t minus of v of x uh, multiplied by the velocity of x so this is basically the point any point in the channel where we can identify uh, the velocity at that particular point the velocity of the majority carriers at that particular point and the voltage of vx right the voltage at that particular point right in the channel so if it is a point is at the drain side we will have v of d and uh, the velocity at that particular drain point and if it is at the source point we will have the v of s and then the velocity uh, at the source point Right, so in this case, uh, so this is the generalized expression and then, uh, so this V of X, right, when E is smaller than uh, critical electric field, when electric field, uh, the lateral electric field or the, the electric field from the drain to source, uh, if it is uh, less than EC, then we will have this uh, velocity uh, given by the expression as mu effective into E of X divided by one plus EX uh, by EC. So where X is nothing but, uh, I know the electric field at that particular point in the channel. Again, this is the velocity uh, at the point X in the channel. So if I have this particular expression, I can bring in this particular uh, denominator uh, over to the uh, left hand side and I'll get uh, this particular expression uh, with WC oxide into VG minus VT minus V of the, the potential at X into the mobility, effective mobility into the electric field of X, right? So if I take this now onto the uh, right hand side, I should be able to derive at this particular expression, which is nothing but E of X uh, is equal to the IDS divided by the current divided by all this particular uh, variables. All right, so going back, uh, so I'll just go back and then say that, okay, uh, E of X electric field can also be rewritten as the, uh, the potential at the point X divided by D of X, right? So an incremental change in the potential with respect to an incremental, uh, uh, the, channel, uh, uh, the channel length change. So that is DX. And so we can rewrite that particular slide uh, equation into this particular form IDS divided by whatever is the was the variables which we had uh, arrived at. And if I take the integral, you know, uh, so this dx uh, will go on to the uh, right hand side. And if I take an integral on both the sides, on one side, it will be the potential because this is the potential, you know, different uh, incremental uh, difference in the potential. Uh, so that is uh, differential uh, potential, so dV of x. So that's how, you know, its limits will be starting from the source side to the drain side. And uh, uh, dx will be on the other side. So if I take an in, uh, integral on the right hand side, I will have the limits from zero. That is, you know, we always consider the channel length starting from the source. So at the source side, it will be zero. And at the drain side, it will be nothing but the channel length of L. Right, so this particular parameters is nothing but uh, you know a constant, so it will go, go outside the integral, and uh, we will have v g minus v t minus v of x minus of id of uh, i d s by e c. Uh, you know, again, this is uh, again this this is a constant parameter, so we are considering uh, uh, the i d s value at any particular point uh, in the x. Right, uh, at any particular uh, uh, point in the x will be same. This is the current at any particular point in the channel because of the majority carriers uh, we are assuming that uh, it will be constant so the ids and ec value will be constant so this will be also be coming outside the integral so what we now have is vg minus vt minus v of x uh, and then that particular integral uh, and here we will have ids and dx so ids will come outside uh, and then we have dx and then the integral so this particular parameter is uh, you know we can um, uh, so the solution of this particular integral will be Vg minus Vt minus uh, Vd the whole square minus of Vg uh, minus Vt minus of Vs. So it is basically uh, these two limits 
is coming uh, in place of Vx, right? So it, that will be equal to IDS uh, by, you know, on the right hand side, whatever we get, that will be uh, IDS, uh, uh, IDS into the channel length of L, right? L minus zero. And this, this particular parameter is actually coming from uh, the left hand side integral, which I've taken it onto the right hand side. So finally, we will arrive at uh, VDS and uh, two VGT minus VD minus VS. So if I uh, consider this particular expression of, uh, you know, the two VGT, so let me get my pointer. Uh, so if I take this uh, two VGT minus VD minus VS, which is uh, an expression that has been, uh, you know, arrived at it in the last slide, this VGT is nothing but, uh, you know, nothing but VG minus VT. Uh, and then here, if I take the two common, so I will have VD by two and mi minus of VS by two. And in this particular uh, brackets within this parenthesis, if I add a VS by two and minus VS by two, uh, so I will get uh, this VS and this VS making one complete VS. So this will uh, anyways form the VGS. Uh, this T is there, which will give me v, t v of T. And uh, the other half of Vs by 2 will get accommodated into this uh, Vds by 2, right? So we will get uh, Vgs minus Vt minus Vds by 2 into the outside is nothing but 2. So finally, uh, what we'll get is a mu effective Wc oxide v Vds uh, multiplied by Vgs minus Vt minus uh, Vds by 2 is equal to Ids into uh, uh, L plus, so this is L plus Vds by Ec, right? So in this case, uh, uh, so this EC can also be written as VC uh, 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 VC by L. So this L goes to the numerator side and then I can take this L common. So finally, I'll get the ideas of, uh, you know, the short channel current or the linear, uh, for the linear mode is nothing but uh, the whatever is the expression on this uh, left hand side. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's an L parameter which is coming from this particular L taken outside and divided by one plus uh, E by EC right everything else remains the same right whatever is there in the uh, left hand side is coming into this particular whole uh, whole part right so that's what the equation we have so uh, and if i want to find out what is the well uh, at the velocity saturation or rather you know uh, at the velocity saturation um, uh, we have we know that the velocity will be v sat whether it is for the nmos or the pmos uh, for nmos it is uh, nothing but uh, 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 10 is to 7 for the pmos it is 8 into 10 is to 6 and uh, we know that uh, the v of x uh, you know it reaches uh, the saturation so the potential it reaches is VDS. Uh, the potential difference it reaches uh, at a point X in the channel will be nothing but uh, VDS uh, saturation. So if I put those equation into my earlier equation, so let me uh, go back to my earlier equation. So the earlier equation was in the slide number three, uh, which is uh, the current is given in terms of the velocity. So if I put uh, V of X as nothing but, uh, you know, taken uh, at the drain point as VDS saturation, right and v of x is the velocity saturation right so if i apply this i will actually arrive at uh, uh, i will actually arrive at the velocity saturation uh, uh, current equation for the short channel so the current short channel and then the saturation is what uh, i have been describing is nothing but wc of x vgs minus vd minus vds sat uh, multiplied by the velocity saturation right and that's what i have written here so um, the slide number three uh, equation I have written here also to just to notice that, you know, we can directly plug in the values of the velocity and that of uh, the potential, the VDS set. So if I really want to find out what is the actual VD set, right? So in a long channel, uh, we know that the VD set is nothing but VGS minus VT. Uh, so in a long channel, uh, we know that uh, VDS set is nothing but VGS minus VT. So what is this particular VDS sat in a short channel? So we now have a linear current equation. We now have a, uh, a saturation current equation. So if I equate both to both of them together, because uh, uh, even, you know, when I draw the short channel uh, current equation, so if I draw the IDS value versus the VDS value for a particular VGS value, I'll still be able to get uh, the, the uh, the saturation mode uh, line and then the linear mode line 
and both this particular uh, profiles which we have derived at it uh, they are continuous so at this particular point where it reaches the saturation both the equations uh, sh should match so if i consider this linear equation saturation equation if i equate it uh, together so that means that mu uh, this particular whole expression for the, the for the linear uh, expression is equated to the saturation expression uh, and we have this vds is equal to nothing but uh, the vds saturation so i will get the vds sat as nothing but uh, vc into vgs minus vt uh, divided by vgs minus vt plus vc right so this is what is the uh, a uh, vds saturation uh, which we arrive for the short channel right for the long channel it is nothing but vgs minus vt for the short uh, channel it is nothing but vgs minus vt multiplied by vc divided by vgs minus vt plus vc so this form this this is basically this particular uh, uh, you know the boxed item it says that the vc and the vgs minus vt are in kind of a parallel form so if i consider a uh, two parallel resistance I'll get R1 and R2 uh, in parallel, then the effective resistance or the equivalent resistance will be R1 into R2 plus R1 plus R2. Right here, VDS saturation, the effective VDS saturation for the short channel will be VC into VGS minus VT divided by VGS minus VT plus VC. Right now, so if I use this, uh, you know, in the saturation current equation, in the saturation uh, equation, right? So let me go back a uh, couple of slides back. So I'll get this saturation uh, current equation where I had this VDS sat, right? So in that case, uh, so if I go to this, uh, uh, you know, the, the the previous slide where we have arrived at uh, VDS sat is nothing but uh, VC into VGS minus VT divided by VGS minus VT plus VC, uh, then uh, we are likely to get the IDS saturation value as nothing but uh, WC oxide VG, uh, uh, no, this one is, uh, you know, this is nothing but, uh, VGS uh, minus VT the whole square right and then this one is uh, VC plus VGS minus VT so again this v VGT is nothing here is nothing but VGS uh, minus VT right into the velocities uh, saturation 